Hey guys, today we're going to have another approach to building a staircase and in my opinion this way is slightly better because it's I feel like it's a little more malleable in that uh, you can switch the conditions. So what I mean is uh, if you haven't seen my last video on this it's a little simpler just watch that for a little more context but we have a for loop we got int i equals one because we start off with one i is less than or equal to whatever amount of like total asterisks you want we'll say five again i plus plus because you're trying to you know go higher um now let's put the uh, uh braces so now we're gonna need the embedded for loop again for int j equals one now see this is where it differs so another way of looking at a staircase is saying oh it's just you're essentially slicing a box in half and in the last video i made it so j was dependent on i but in this video let's make j independent of i in this statement so let's say j additionally is less than or equal to five so let's do j plus plus and add the uh, braces and do system dot out dot print ln not ln actually in this do asterisk all right so if we print it like this um it will just do it in a straight line because we didn't add our you know ln statement so right after the embedded for loop let's add a uh, system dot out dot print ln and you know maybe put a space there to make it easy to read. So now this logic will give us a box because both of them are going from zero to five and or one to five in this case. And I know on this ID, it doesn't look that good, but that is in, in fact a square, <laughs> but um, all right. Now let's try to carve it out. Let's try to make it so that we just get rid of half of it and you know make a triangle or a staircase. So all you need to do is add a simple condition statement where you say if, let's say j is less than or equal to i, then we print it. I'm not gonna add braces because that's just cumbersome, but if we print this, it should build a staircase properly. There we go, one to five. So why we said j is less than or equal to i? Well, first let's here look here. If we go in the outer for loop, we can see it starts at one for i. Then it looks inside, j is one. So in this case, j is actually equal to i, in that accepts this condition and so it would print it once then you move on to the next line and you say oh now i is two first uh you know the inner for loop will restart it'll say oh j is one again and one is in fact less than or equal to uh two and it'll print and then it'll increment the inner for loop or j and then uh j will become two which is also equal to two and it'll print and so on and so forth and there you go. So now we have essentially the same thing as last video, but like what, let's say you want to invert it now, instead of like messing with the for loop conditions, let's just, you know, switch the uh, if statement. Let's say J is greater than or equal to I this time. What do you think is going to happen? So it's going to actually invert it starting from the bottom essentially becomes the top, you know, lo logically because it's going to print all of it at once and then slowly increment back down. So I feel like this method is slightly better than the other one. And uh, yeah. Okay, so here's where things get uh, pretty difficult. So now let's say you wanna print a staircase instead of from uh, left to right, like here. What if you wanna print it right to left, which is, you know, looks a little more natural in our eyes. Well, uh, the thing is, to have these blank spaces here, you're literally going to have to print them. Like there's no special way around it. You're going to have to print those blank spaces. And again, you're inverting the pattern. So what we're gonna have to do, again, we have the for loop, which is initially, you know, i equals one, i is less than or equal to five, i plus plus, that's fine. Here's where things get a little uh, tricky. So first we're gonna have another for loop. Int j equals one, j, is less than or equal to five or the upper limit minus i all right let's see why that is so we're gonna do again j plus plus i'm not gonna put uh, braces here because that's just redundant at this point and now we're just gonna print a simple space that this is the way you just print a blank space by just putting a space between quotation marks and um 
By doing this essentially, we're just printing the amount of blank spaces. So in the beginning, uh, we know i is going to be 1, so it's going to be 5 minus 4. Therefore, it's going to print 4 blank spaces in the first row, and then print 1 right after. But hold on, all we did was just, uh, let's just run this real quick. All we did, essentially, was just print the space in a line. We're going to have to properly increment it. You know, we're just going, we're, we're kind of like sculpting it as we go. So, the, the problem is, since we had a for loop of spaces, now we're going to need a for loop with uh, the, you know, the thing we're printing, in this case, asterisks. So, for int k, let's say ijk, equals 1, again, and uh, k should be less than or equal to i, because initially i was the thing we were going to print, and then k++. So what are we going to put under here? We're going to put, this time we're actually going to put the uh, asterisks in here. So now by doing this, we should be able to print the correct amount of asterisks, obviously in the wrong way. But do you see here how the amount of space is slowly decreased? That's perfect. All you need to do is just add the system.out.println statement, and uh, then we have our, you know, our staircase. So here's the thing. We're not going to put it in either of these four loops, obviously, because that's independent of them. We're going to do it after they finish printing, both of them. So we're going to actually keep it in the outer for loop. And all we do is just do system.out.println to you know separate the asterisks from each other. And there you go, perfect. We got the uh, ascending uh, asterisk staircase. OK, lastly, uh, let's say you want to convert from the staircase we just had to an upside down version of that. Now this is probably where it is the hardest. So we're, essentially we're just inverting this logic. So firstly, what we should notice is that um, the conditions have to be rearranged because now we're not printing the spaces first, we're actually increasing the amount of spaces that should be printed. So um, what we should do is change this condition here. Now it's not 5 minus i, it's just simply j equals 1, j should be less than i, like done. Because let's say they're the same, j is 1, i is 1, it should not print a space, it should just print the asterisk. So this accounts for that correction. Uh, yeah, and the space is fine here. And let's look down here. So now we got int k equals 1. Now the problem is instead of going from little to large, we're actually going from big to little. So we start with the maximum, we're just calling it 5, and now we're actually going to decrease k. So k is less than or equal to i now, and then k minus minus. I mean, that's all we did. We're only just rearranging the limits logically. So if we print this, it should print the upside down version of that. So now, after this video, you're able to print any direction of the staircase. All right, uh, hopefully this is clear. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and uh, see you next time.